here is the THD TX1. Um, it's a pretty performancey kind of shape, like a standard traditional shortboard, I would say. Um, the size is 511 by 19 by 2 and 3 eighths with 27.5 litres. Um, so pretty standard sort of shortboard dimensions across most sort of shortboards these days. Um, so first thoughts when I was writing this board were probably that it paddles pretty well for a performance shortboard and it surfs pretty well in like a wide range of conditions even when the waves are smaller like it's still it still rides really well um i'm still able to paddle into waves even when it is smaller and like the waves don't necessarily have as much push it still paddles well um probably because the rocker in the nose is a little lower than you would expect from like a super high performance board um I think that's probably the main reason why it paddles so well. Um, the foam up around the nose and stuff isn't like crazy. It's still normally like still pretty thinned out like a normal performance shortboard. Um, but yeah, it, it just paddles really well. And the ra the rails are like a little bit like they're not super low. They're more uh, more forgiving like medium kind of medium to full sort of rail. Um, so that would also help with the paddling as well. Um, so when I bought the board, I uh, bought it for just surfing like just beach breaks really, just like a wide range of conditions. Anything that's like kind of between uh, waist high and maybe like a few feet overhead was like the range that I thought thought of riding this board in. Um, and pretty much just riding it in like all different types of waves. So even if it's like barreling, like smaller kind of barreling waves, um, like fuller kind of beach break waves, point breaks, pretty much just everything. Um, and it does perform really well in like all of those different types of conditions. I would say like if it's really small, it's probably like you would want more of a grobler. And if it's really like big and barreling, you probably want something with like more of a rounded pintail, like a bit more of a step up kind of board. But anything in between is like really good for those, those types of waves. Um, so... When I was writing it, uh, the features that sort of stood out to me the most were like the rails, like I mentioned before, they're like medium to full kind of rails um, and they're super forgiving. So if you put this board through a big turn and you're like kind of like at the end of the turn trying to recover, like it does that really well. Um, same with like floaters and things like that. If, you, um, yeah, if you're doing a floater and coming out of manoeuvres and things, it's really good for that like it makes it really easy to sort of ride away and things like that um airs as well especially like if you like i'm not the, the best at airs but like you definitely like if you stop one of those it makes it easier to ride away for sure um so yeah i would say the rails were a notable feature um the tail probably like it's it's not super wide but it definitely gets pulled in a little bit like through this last part of the board here um and if yeah you've got your foot like nice nice and far back on the tail pad it really whips through turns really nicely as well um yeah the concave is just a single concave the whole way through um so it creates a good amount of lift um which creates a lot of speed as well uh so yeah that's really fun as well um when you're trying to put it through turns it maintains the speed the whole way through the turn which is really nice um so <clears throat> with the fin setup it's just a thruster um i'm writing the futures fins in it uh they're the r6 legacy series futures fins um so these fins have a bit more of a rake a rake template compared to like a you know your normal sort of standard fin they're more drawn back with like in that aspect um, which gives you a lot more control and stability and it helps with drive as well. Um, so yeah, they're just, I find, I find these fins and fins with a bit of rake um, tend to work best for me and they work best in this board specifically as well, um, just to give it like a lot of control and, and, and hold and drive. Um, so in hindsight, if there's anything I would have changed about the board, uh, probably nothing really. <laughs> It's um, it's a pretty, it's a really good all round board. Um, surfs really well, like I mentioned, in anything from sort of like waist high to overhead. Um, 
yeah, I don't think there's anything I'd really change. These are the standard dimensions that um, the DX1 comes in, which again are 511 by 19 by 2 and 3 eighths, 27.5 litres. Uh, and yeah, I would buy this board again in those gyms for sure. Um, and yeah, overall the board is really fun. It's um, If you're looking for a performance short board that's not like super high performance, but you still definitely want to get like critical and, you know, try airs and all that kind of stuff. Um, it works. It works for all of those kind of um, maneuvers that you want to try and do. Uh, and then also, like it works in a wide range of waves. So, like any, like I said, anything from shoulder high. I mean, waist high to a little bit overhead. It's going to perform in pretty much any waves within that kind of size range. So yeah, THD DX one, good board. <laughs>